Hello, my name is Matias Kavodik, the guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the time Moon Knight obliterated the Avengers during Jason Aaron's run. It's a pretty recent story. And the um, thing is, like, when Aaron started on the Avengers in this particular run, I really didn't like it. I didn't like what he, how he retconned the relationship of the Celestials uh, with Earth and Earth's heroes and why there's people with superpowers on the planet, so on and so forth. It just really didn't work for me. And so... After that first story arc, I sort of skipped out on this run. But then I bought the um, Avengers tie-ins into the War of the Realms. And I really liked them. I saw, I liked uh, some of the ideas he was trying to work on. I loved uh, the re reintroduction of the Squadron Supreme. Um, the involvement of Mephisto and so on and so forth. So I was pretty intrigued. And then I knew about the story arc where Moon Knight takes down the Avengers. So... I thought to myself, I got to get this compilation issue. Now, one thing about uh, Aaron's style on the Avengers, like I loved his work on Thor. I loved his work on Wolverine and the X-Men and uh, other runs, but those are the two ones that really stand out to me. And um, my is my big issue is, outside of retconning stuff with the Celestials, that he plays real fast and loose with powers. <laughs> and, uh, the power sets to certain characters are all over the place. Um, especially with um, Black Panther. The, like Black Panther is like the Dale Six Machina character. Want to resolve the story? Black Panther pulls something out of his ass, gets everything fixed or kicks someone's ass really quick. And the story is resolved in a lickety split. Much like Scarlet Witch in the Heroes Return era of the Avengers. She would throw a hex. Problem resolved. Don't get me wrong, I love Black Panther. I love his role within the Avengers, within Aaron's run. Super cool. And um, Aaron's storytelling, I'm sort of used to the part of being like super over the top, super bombastic. So, start off the story. We have Night... Um, I was going to say Nightcrawler, sorry. <laughs> Nothing to do. Moon Knight. He starts taking out main characters uh, that are heroes, that are tied to the Avengers. First, he goes after Iron Fist. What's sort of re really weird for me is that Iron Fist is not acquainted with Moon Knight himself. I was pretty sure that both of these characters know each other. So, we get the first battle, and Moon Knight comes out on top. He uses these Egyptian crosses. I'm not sure how they're called. I think they're called Anks. Probably mispronounced that. But with the Egyptian cross, some funky Egyptian magic, he's able to steal uh, Iron Fist's power. Then this is repeats when he attacks Doctor Strange. I love the Mr. Knight look. It looks so freaking cool. Like, I really hope Marvel Legends get, uh, puts out a figure like this. So, he takes down Doctor Strange. Then he steals Ghost Rider's car. And then we cut to Moon Knight going to Wakanda, trying to take down Black Panther. Now, one really weird thing that I feel like it's sort of missed in this story is that Khonshu, the god... He's he's like the avatar of the god of vengeance of Egypt. Has a relationship and, and is connected to Bast, the panther god, to Black Panther. So both of these characters have history together. And um, and there's quite a bit of reverence and um, respect between both of them. Especially like Black Panther towards Moon Knight. And uh, so Bast is never mentioned in the story. So I'm not sure what's the situation with the panther god at this moment. Because if he's still around, it's like I felt like it was sort of like a wasted opportunity. Then um, he tries to steal the powers from Black Panther. He's like, nope, you can't steal it from me. It's with my blood. It's my heritage, my bloodline. Um, then he goes, but he, he gives himself in. Like Panther gets himself captured to really sort of like um, investigate what's going on, see what he can see from the inside, even though he's going to be in the cell and be tortured. But he's going to try to get to the bottom of things. Then we cut to Thor, who is Thor with the Odin Force. Like, he's crazy powerful. Now, here, when Thor tries to attack Moon Knight, Moon Knight's able to control Mjolnir because he says that Mjolnir is made out of... Uru comes from the moon. And though, even though he can't pick up the hammer, he can, like, control it in its flight. So he uses Thor's hammer, beats the living crap out of him. But I'm going to give this one to Eren. Like, I felt... First I read it, I thought, whoa, that's way, to the top, way, way too over the top. Where did this come from in the first place? But I remembered Aaron wrote Thor for 10 years, so I'll give it to him. <laughs> the guy's really, he really built up Thor's lore quite a bit. So what Moon Knight does using um, this 
Doctor Strange's powers, he just drops a ton of moons on Thor and keeps him trapped. So what's the deal? So Khonshu uh, basically set out to destroy the Avengers because he thinks the Avengers uh, serve the interest of Mephisto. Mephisto is the big bad to the series. And he's influ Mephisto has been influencing situations uh, and conflicts with the Avengers to serve his interests. So basically, Khonshu wants to take him down because uh, he feels like the Avengers are puppets to Mephisto and that Mephisto is, is going to orchestrate some type of situation with the Avengers where he's going to be able to come out on top and do whatever the hell <laughs> Mephisto wants to do, bring hell on Earth, conquer everyone's souls. So basically, this is a battle between Khonshu and Mephisto. So, Moon Knight, who has stolen the powers of Iron Fist, Ghost Rider, and Thor at this moment, and Doctor Strange, he actually plows Mjolnir through uh, Mephisto's chest with two angst, kills Mephisto. But what's going to happen is that Mephisto's across the multiverse are going to start arriving, trying to, to kill Khonshu and trying to stop him. And Khonshu is a freaking fascinating character. And I love the level of conflict between Khonshu and Moon Knight. It's really fascinating. Because Moon Knight is really not on board with this whole situation. Like, Moon Knight, the followers of Khonshu, that, that cult, and Khonshu himself, like, again, have this really weird and conflictive situation amongst them. Uh, Moon Knight sort of feels like he's doing the lesser of two evils in this whole situation. Khonshu takes advantage takes over everything. We start with the era of, of Khonshu, the age of, of Khonshu. And this is like one of the parts that sort of get, got me bent out of shape is when Black Panther is able to escape. He just breaks the chains like, okay, I'm done. I'm ready to get into action. I got the information I needed. And he just breaks the chains. I know maybe vibranium, so on and so forth, but it's just one page that, of very lazy storytelling there. So... We go into the past. We discover that um, there was the original Moon Knight in 1 million BC also had a conflict with the Avengers of 1 million BC. So it's like always Khonshu has sort of been on the other side in conflict with the Avengers. Obviously, this is sort of retcon because Moon Knight was on the West Coast of the Avengers for the longest time and Khonshu had no issues with that. So at the tail end of this story, again, it's really worth reading. It's a lot of fun except for like, like that part of lazy writing with uh, Black Panther when he escapes. Um, what Moon Knight decides to do is actually he courts and calls to the Phoenix and actually goes up against Khonshu. He wants to fix the whole situation. So we get Phoenix, Phoenix Moon Knight. And after this, we're going to have a story arc with the Phoenix and the Avengers. And so I, I sort of like that the Phoenix is not tied to the X-Men side of the Marvel Universe anymore. It's more tied to the Avengers. And so it's really cool and interesting to see what, what they're going to do with uh, that entity on that side of the Marvel Universe. So at the end of the story, on an action level, we get the writer jumping the shark like 15 times. She-Hulk becomes the Iron Fist briefly. We get uh, Blade becoming the Sorcerer Supreme. We have Moon Knight almost succumbing to the Phoenix and wanting to just basically kill all life on Earth. Thankfully... Odin level Thor is able to stop him and defeat him. He actually Moonlight sort of lets him win, but at the end of the day, the Avengers are able to stop Khonshu, capture him. They have a lot of questions. What's the deal with Khonshu, his conflict with Mephisto, and how if he's right that Mephisto has orchestrated situations that will lead the Avengers to do something really bad that serves Mephisto's interests. So I'm gonna leave this story here. I spoiled the hell out of it, as I always say. It's a real fun read, and I'm going to go backtrack and reread most of Aaron's run. I think the story arc with the vampires and Dracula, I might skip that one, but the rest, the one with Starbrand, with the Phoenix, with Ghost Rider, those seem to be pretty cool. So see you guys next time. Bye.